Hello, welcome to Scratch Day Printing. In this video, I will show you the process of how I restore my KO Max into working condition again and printing really good. Let's scratch today's topic. If you follow my journey on 3D printing and my YouTube videos, you will know that my KO Max was not like in the best shape and the best condition for 3D printing anymore. Like in my previous KO Max video, I showed you that it couldn't really print anything at all. Well, it can, but when it goes all the way back towards the back of the 3D printers, it starts doing some under extrusion. The line is just not connecting, it's just not flowing, nothing works. And when it goes to like layer 40 or 50, it just under extrude like crazy or like the nozzle is jammed or whatever the extruder is not extruding and stuff like that it was not working the bed leveling sucks couldn't get anything to stick onto the build plate even after cleaning with soap and water rubbing alcohol and all of that good stuff all the bed leveling adjusting all the screw adjusting everything is just not working I even tried using the spacer that people are doing it and put it on each of the three screws try to raise and lower each side it doesn't work well, for me at least, some people it works well, but for me, it doesn't work that well. So what did I do to fix my KO Max and make it work again? Well, I took my time and, you know, stripped down my KO Max. Well, not completely stripped down everything, but my KO Max, I did agree with the Harden and the extruder to a different type of extruder. For the Harden, I used Micro Swiss. It works really well for a year, but then I guess it kind of got clogged up on the nozzle. And I didn't replace the nozzle. It was Micro Swiss branded nozzle only for the KO Max. The original one from the KO Max nozzle, it was not like the newer version, it was like the older version. There's no tube at the top, I will, I will put a picture here, the new and the old version. And I also replaced the extruder because my extruder, I stripped the thread and it wasn't locking well enough, but I fixed that. I was using the Cyclops extruder and it works well, but based on my experience of using it, the extruder motor is a little bit wider than the original one so if you do a 300 by 300 print on your build plate when it goes back towards the 3D printer it hits the wall it hits the motor on the side which I will show you right now what I mean so what I was talking about is this piece right here not the motor exactly but this piece right here and this piece but it affects this piece more the extruder on the side club was extending this way like about half an inch and when it goes all the way back here might not be the best angle but when the side club it goes all the way back here extrude the motor comes and hit this thing right here this one hit it too but this is like push all the way back so it's gonna hit this and then it's gonna ruin one teeth so when it once so once it hits this it pushes upward like this and ruins one teeth so then the layer is not consistent anymore it's like one teeth off so for this mode it just clear it because this is the maximum but for the side club it needs to go to this point but the motor here is like half an inch further so it hits this thing although maybe it wasn't half an inch but it was like further maybe like five to ten millimeters more than the original one and it was hitting that bad piece so once the head comes hit it like I said it skipped one teeth and then when it goes back in print it's not consistent anymore and so then I put my original extruder back try to fix the thread as best as possible and I also replaced the harden to the original one that comes from Creality for the KO Max they probably won't replace the harden so I just use that one and it works perfect and for the motor if you if I use a side club I need to change the power the amount of rotation and stuff like that and it works for a while but then that problem arises and I just gotta swap it out but for the bed it's like the worst thing I couldn't get the bed or the first layer to print at all it was like the worst even though the bed mesh looks okay because for the bed leveling I went back and do the old method where you use a paper um, I put the I put the bed all the way up to very close to the nozzle where I can slide in paper and it has a little bit of tension. I tried that all over and I don't know, for these kind of 3D printers, you can't really use the paper method to level them because one motor controls all three screws. So if you, if you try to change the motor at this angle here, and if you put the head back, it's just going to be off by that amount. So it's not working. For me i tried my old method escaping the teeth but i feel like that's gonna ruin the 3d printer faster than it needs to be so i did not do that so the method i use is this one and i'll show you right now so i'm gonna turn on my ko max and we'll wait for it to load and everything and i'll show you i'll tell you my old method you see this right 
there's a screw there if you put an add wrench in there and you twist this thing it's gonna it's gonna skip one teeth on this side and so it will go up or down based on the direction you turn and this side like if you think about it it's a it's like a Y right here so this ear right here will be down like one millimeter or like half a millimeter ish so if you do that it's gonna work but by doing that like I said I think it's gonna ruin the 3d printer faster than it needs to be so what did I do well let me show you I just gonna move this all the way down so I just used the screen here to push this thing all the way down until it says maximum volume reach so then let me uh turn off the motor oh I love the KO max man I love how quiet the KO max is it turns off everything it turns off the fan every fan every single fan it, it even turns off the power supply fan I love that I wish that was available for the K2 Plus, man. The first thing I did is this. I lowered the bed all the way to the bottom as much as possible with the motor. Then I turned off my 3D printer. I didn't want to do that because I already did this process. It took so long, but I already did this. So I'm just going to explain this to you guys. I turned off my 3D printer. I used my hand and force push this thing all the way to the bottom. I know that might be bad but in this case it's not actually that bad in my opinion because when it was at this position right here right if you look at this position right here if you look at this spacing and this spacing over here there's a significant differences this spacing has more space than this over here but how do i fix that and so for me that was the problem this spacing was higher than this spacing over here so I use magnets these magnets are pretty precise so they are in very very similar spacing so how I use them is I put them under it like that right I put them under like that push this thing all the way down I unscrewed these three screws right here so that I can move them freely oh yeah I also took this panel and this pen off so that I can easily access that screw and all of the corner screw so I can take off everything and freely move everything freely move my bed just freely move everything so that it's not constrained with all these screws in there so I did that I pushed this thing all the way down I put magnets right here I put another magnets over here so basically for every corner I did one right here one right here so two four six eight spaces so I put in eight spot, two over here, two over there, two over there, and two over here. So that's what I did. I put magnets there, and I push it all the way down. So I put two magnets on each of them. And then I went back and tightened all the screws here, back there, and back there. So that's how I did my bed leveling. Explaining like this is like very simple, very fast, but the amount of time that you take these screws off are like insane because they're such in tight space and for the allen key to be here you gotta do one turn switch one turn take it out one turn again so it's like time consuming and the amount of times you know the magnets went inside here it's like annoying it keeps flipping inside and i gotta remove that but once they get to the corner over here it's like stuck so like, no so to quickly summarize what i did i pushed the bed all the way down I remove all four screws right here, just these four screws right here. Those four screws that holds the rod, those four screws that holds the rod, and I push the thing all the way down, putting magnets here, magnets here, on this side right here, on this corner, on this corner, this corner, this corner, and try to level them as best as I can. Then once I did all of that, I went back and tightened every single corner of the screw. and that gets my bed really level throughout the whole bottom piece and yeah like I said these magnets are pretty similar in size I did use my caliper to find all the ones that are very similar and so I used the magnets to do the leveling so that it's equal on all of the sides so after I did that I turn on my 3D printer again I load it up and I do my bed calibrations and let me tell you the bed was like so way off it was like this this is like a flat bed but it was like this like this like that it was like off so much and i was like did i ruin this again but then i was like let me just do a first layer test and i did a first layer test and it prints beautifully every single corner is not perfect but it lays down the layers really nicely some still there's still some ears that's like 
up and down but the first layer it printed the whole first layer right there and I was like wow it's so good even though the bed mesh says that it's not level it's like cricket like this the actual bed is level so it's like screw that bed mesh I don't care about it as long as the first deck can be printed and printed with no problem at all I was happy but then goes back to my under extrusion part I was like why is this keep under extruding and then I figured out that oh it may or may not be the extruder and or the nozzle it might be the tubing so I take a closer look at the tube on the KO Max and yeah this has been like you know a known issue for the KO Max like a long time ago when it first released people was like this is a huge issue and uh, yeah I do find that a huge issue right now as the 3d printer gets older the issue becomes more relevant and you notice that and I really noticed that it's the tubing I will show you what I mean by the tubing here I don't know why I put the K1 Max too but uh, we'll just take this tube for the example so a tube is supposed to be round like this but the tube on my K1 Max was not like that it was like all oh, cricket and pretty similar to this but not like this too and it wasn't round anymore it was flat so if we take a look at this part right if you cut this in half it's like flat like that if you look closely you can almost see through the tube it was like rubbing against the glass so much that this part became flat and that was really bad plus the angle is like almost 90 degree like this and so when the film comes in this curve it couldn't really go through it was super super difficult for the filament to go through even when you pull out the filament it's like difficult when it goes past this point it's easier to pull out the filament so then I fixed this issue by printing a glass razor which I will show you right now so yeah I printed this glass razor and I will leave a link down below for this if you still have not printed this one for yourself I really highly suggest you go ahead and do it it's really nice it even has the vent here where you can open and close them which is amazing if we look at my k1 max now it still hits this but it's like so much better now it used to be just like that so it was just so so bad but now it has a little bit of angle a little bit of room to go in yeah there we go when it gets to the extruder it's straighter so it's really nice and so that fixed the under extrusion a little bit but there was another problem back here it was back here um it was right here that's where the original tubing for the kill max go i printed this riser and decided to mount my filament sensor up here so the original screw was right there and right there double-sided tape to my 3d printing glass razor for my KO Max and it just worked like a charm this is the, like the perfect spot this is a brand new tube as you can see right there there's no rubbing or anything yet there's a little bit of rubbing but there's no flat tube yet so this thing can reach everywhere and at a really good angle so if you know the KO Max which I can't really show you it might be backward so that's where it goes and the tube will come out here and it will go down there so it'll be like a 90 degree angle something like that right so it'll come out here and then my filament will be right here it will go here go here and then at this corner over here which i can really show you it will have a 90 degree angle like some pretty much something like this right so a 90 degree angle like that and when you push in the filament it's like so hard to push in the filament through that so what i did was i drew a hole through this and then put the filament sensor up here and i used this filament heater from fix dry to mount my spool of filament and so it comes out this tube and then down and look at this even though the tube is like that it's like a good angle where there's really no rough angle and the filament can just flow smoothly out if it's like if it's like this then it's gonna have a problem but since it's like this it's not like a 90 degree angle where it's just stuck it's it flows smoothly in and straight into the filament sensor i wish creativity would have done this instead of having the tube back here where it goes in and just have like a to be honest back here is like a double 90 degree it has to curve in and it has to curve out into the filament sensor which is so bad and that fix everything this is such a nice setup man it just flow right into the filament sensor and then flow right into the nozzle extruder well that is a lot of information and this video is already like what 15 minutes plus if i show all the step do all the step i think it might take like 
four or five hour, even almost a half day. But just explain this and show you all the process that I did. Hopefully I explain everything pretty well and you get it. And so if you want to do this project on your Kill Max, I suggest you do it. If your 3D printer is pretty good, then maybe leave it. But if it's pretty bad and you like under extrusion, try looking at those two problems. The main problem is the back of the cable max where the filament goes in into the filament sensor. It's like I said, basically like a double 90 degree angle. It has to wave in and then wave out into the filament sensor. It's like crazy. But with this setup, it's like a really smooth angle. It just goes straight into the filament sensor and then shoot into the extruder and into the nozzle. And then just print really nicely and just print perfectly. All my prints that I have printed before was not this smooth, was not this good for the Kill Max. I don't have any parts to show, but it has been printing really nicely for me. And at this point, I am willing to put the Kill Max up against the K2 Plus. Because a couple of prints that I did, the Kill Max printed a little bit better than the K2 Plus in terms of quality. But it's just those things that makes the 3D printer bad. The angle of it, the not having enough space at the top, the bad leveling sucks, but if all of those are fixed, it actually prints part really good, really smooth, and really nice. Well, that'll be it for this video. It's been a lot of talking, explaining, but hopefully everything is clear. If you still have any questions on the Kill Max, how to get the things that I did here, leave a comment down below. Leave a like in this video to help me, make me happy, and subscribe to the channel because a more amazing stuff like this is coming all the time. And as always, keep on 3D printing.